Welcome back to the Blue Sky Performance YouTube channel. I'm Jesse, and today I'm going to show you how to properly measure for wheels and tires. So here we have Joe's 68 Firebird on the Roadster Shop spec chassis. And the first thing we're going to want to do is measure the wheel well width. So about 11 and a half inches. So we're going to order a tire that has a narrower sectional width than that. Um, this particular car, we've been running 275s um, for years. Um, it's always fit really well. So we decided to go with a 275 again, um, except this time we're doing a 18 in the front and a 19 in the rear. This is a 275, 35, 19. Um, it, it's, it, it should fit very nicely with this car. It's nice at Potenza. Uh, what is it? The RE71 RS tire. It's a 200 wear tire, nice and sticky, asymmetrical design. Um, so it's going to make this car handle really well. So um, first things first is I have the tire jigged up on our CC Tech wheel fitment tire. These aren't cheap. However, the price of this is great insurance if you mess up a set of, you know, very expensive tires. So we're going to want to go ahead and use this tire tool every time. Um, a, a cardinal rule in car building is mock up everything. Uh, it's kind of Murphy's Law. If you don't mock up something and think it's going to be okay, it's going to come back to bite you. So mock up everything in real world. It's super redundant. The more redundant on mock up you can be, the better off you'll be because on final fitment, um, we're going to get a wheel that fits the car perfectly because so, we know, we saw with our own eyes that this had perfect clearance um, to fit the car. So we're going to start by bolting this up. There's a couple different styles of wheel fitment tools. We've been using this wheel fitment tool for quite a few years now. Um, it's paid for itself over and over again. Um, however, I did break my cardinal rule of mocking everything up. Um, in real world and I did some math. I mocked up a wheel on a rear on a stock width rear and the customer had ordered a narrowed rear. However, we weren't ready to, to mock up the rear correctly and measurements weren't made right. And sure enough, I ordered the wheels and they came in with the wrong back spacing. So I ended up having to send the wheels back and have the wheels re-barreled, which uh, it made the car look cooler because they ended up being deeper. However, it cost me um, a pretty penny to have that done. So having the tool and using, you know, uh, I'm sorry, uh, mocking it up with the car in real world time is uh, paramount because you're, you're, you're not going to make the mistake of ordering the wrong size wheel. So now that we have this in place, we're, we're going to get it set up. Now this will slide back and forth to get your back spacing perfect. Really nice. Now rule of thumb, you usually want about a half inch of clearance, half inch clearance to the inside, maybe a little bit more um, because we don't, we don't want the tire to contact the inside. Um, of the wheel well. So we're going to go ahead and set it up to where it feels good. We're not going to make any measurements yet, but this, this looks pretty good. So, Okay. Now that we have our wheel and tire on our fitment tool bolted to the car, I'm actually going to remove the coilovers so that I can cycle the suspension. I can put it at full compression, full droop. I can articulate the rear to make sure that through the full range of the suspension movement, the tire isn't contacting anywhere. So now that we have the shocks out, we've put our axle all the way up against the bump stops. In our case, we measured the compressed shock length and set it at the shock length where the shock would be if the car were to take a big hit and we're gonna bottom out that shock, which probably won't happen, but you never know. Let's plan for the worst. So we've set it and then we'll bring it down a bit. 
simulate some suspension articulation, get the rear up, down, making sure that there's plenty of clearance. We got lots of clearance in here. Um, one thing to keep in mind also is that a tire, even though it's on the tire fitment tool, when you inflate it, it actually gets taller and skinnier. So if it's a little bit close for your liking, just know that it's going to shrink a little bit. So you'll be good to go. So now that our wheel is set where we like it, we're now going to measure the back spacing. The back spacing is your measurement from the back edge of the wheel to the, to the hub face. And we are at two and five eighths. Um, this rear is narrowed three inches per side, so it's going to be nice and deep. Even though it's just a nine inch, it's going to be super, super deep. So now that we have back spacing, we're ready to start writing down the measurements that we need to give uh, Ford's line. So one of the measurements that your wheel company is going to ask you about is caliper stick out. It's caliper stick out is if, if your caliper sticks out further from the hub face because when they're designing a wheel they don't want to have a flat. If you have a stick out coming above the hub face, they don't want to have a spoke or a fl you know the, the, the hub flange getting in the way of your caliper and having contact issues. Um, in our case, we're fine. It is back behind the hub about, geez, three quarters of an inch, so we're fine on that. So what we'll do is we'll just tell Ford's line, don't worry about caliper clearance on, on this. Um, sometimes you'll have to measure the bore. Um, the rotor happens to be hub centric. However, the wheel is not going to be hub centric. It's going to be lug, lug centric. This use, we're going to be using um, tapered style lug nuts so we don't have to worry about giving them we will give them this measurement. They'll know it because of the brake kit that uh, we're using on this particular uh, application. However, sometimes this will stick out, so we need to give them that measurement. Another vital me measurement we're gonna have to give them is the bolt pattern. This is a Pontiac, so I know that it's five by four and three quarter. Ford is five by four and a half, you know, but the right way to measure a five lug bolt pattern is you're going to measure from the outside of this lug nut and then to the center of your opposite wheel stud. So as you can see, five by four and three quarters, 4.75. So you're going to want to make sure that you give that to your wheel company as well. Okay, now that we're done with the rear, we can move on to doing the front and I'll show you what it takes to swap over to an 18 inch wheel size by an eight inch width. So we're gonna wanna loosen up the sidewall clamp. So now that we're removed, this is set up in the 19 inch diameter. So what we're going to want to do is move down and put these bolts into the 18 inch. Now that we're at the 18 inch diameter, we need to move and change our width to an 8 inch. Now coming back, this is 10 inches wide, so we're going to need to make it 9 inches wide. So we'll move two spots to make the width 9 inches wide for an 8 inch wheel. Whoa!
now that we got that all ready, we can install it into the tool. Now, it doesn't really matter at this point. However, I like to do it just for practice. This is an asymmetrical tire, outside, inside. It's not directional, it's not left or right, it's inside and outside. People will think it, it's spinning backwards, people will think you put the wrong side on the wrong direction and yada yada no it's asymmetrical so it spins in any direction it's just inside and outside and inside so keep in mind now you'll probably need a pry bar in most cases yep <clears throat> especially on these low profile tires we're gonna keep the bead clamps nice and loose. And check that out. Two of them are already set. So we just gotta get this one over the edge here. Give a little wiggle, let it settle in. Then we'll go ahead and measure. I'm sorry, not measure. Tighten up the bead clamp. So now, there you go. That's how you set up a tire fixture tool, tire measurement, tire measurement tool, whatever you want to call it. Now that I have the front wheel off, I'm going to go ahead, just like the rear, I'm going to take the coilover out. That way we can get the, the suspension up into full articulation. Um, front is extremely important, being that it's now a turning axle you're gonna have a lot more clearance issues um, on the front. So it's, it's, it's very important to remove the, the coilover in order to get full movement out of the suspension. Okay, now that the coilover is out of the way, we can go ahead, get this thing bolted up. Now, the tool's set to four inches of back spacing. However, our old wheels we're at four and a half inches of back spacing, and I had a suspicion that we'll need about a half inch more of back spacing. So we're gonna go ahead and move this in an inch. So we're gonna give it five inches of back spacing. Let's say we're. Doo -doo -doo. So let's see, we're right there. So we're gonna bottom that out and see where we're at. We had contact issues after we did the alignment. We had contact issues where the tire was actually contacting the fender on this side, not the passenger side. Um, that's again, that's old vehicle tolerances, uh, restored car tolerances, just things that come up. So we'll go in here and look at that. We have lots of clearance, we're good. And that's at full droop. So what we'll do is we'll get a jack stand, we'll bring the car down and we'll get a jack stand to get this thing up into ride height and do full articulation at compression. Um, that way we know if the car's ever getting pushed really hard and you're turning hard into a corner, you hit a bump, car dips down and you're not hitting the fender and eating up a tire. Now we got quite a bit of compression in here and we can turn the wheel and we are turning 100%, tire isn't contacting the fender. You know, we can get full lock to lock turning and the tire is still turning. So we are golden. So five inches of backspace for the front is gonna, it's gonna do us real nice. Like the back, 
there's a couple extra measurements we have to make. Again, this side, we're not, we're, we're not proud of the hub face on the caliper, so we're, we're golden on that aspect. We are, however, gonna need to measure, they're gonna ask you spindle height. So, you know, put it here and measure down. We have two and an eighth. Now, if you have, if you have a bare brake setup, um, Will Woods, Brembo's, you can usually give them a part number and they'll be able to get the specs. Uh, all the brake companies have those specs on file, so you'll just be able to tell your wheel company, hey, I have you know this bare brake kit, and they'll be able to take that and put that into the wheel. So to measure my spindle diameter, let me get my trusty calipers, zero them out, come to here. We are at sixty one point seven millimeters. So we'll go ahead, we'll jot that down. So the day has come. Our Forge Line GT three C's have showed up. Roscoe's here to watch them get unbo uh, unboxed. All right, bud, you can give me a hand. So this is the front wheel, 18 by eight, five inch back spacing. What's cool is that when you get them, there's actually the wheel specs on the outside of the box. So you know what is the front, which one's the rear. Comes with cool stickers. Be very careful. Don't want to nick these. line GT3 C's fully polished polished barrels polished faces we went with a Pontiac Aero center cap that Forge line was able to do for us we went with a textured silver inner barrel easier cleanup uh, nice and clean but it's silver so it's nice and bright so it'll really make those bear brakes pop so the next step is to open the rear box That'll be the fun one because it is super deep, deep wheel. It's a nine inch wheel with a two and a half, two and a quarter, two and a half inch back spacing. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's gonna be awesome. There you go. 19 by nine, super deep. It's a concave center, nice fat lip, powder coated clear over the polish so Joe will never have to worry about any oxidation, any haziness. They'll be easy to clean and they're always gonna look good. Um, you can't get much better than this with a polish wheel. Um, it's, man, it's really gonna transfer, trans, uh, transform the uh, look of the car. 
So next step now, let's go over to the car. I have it on our driver drive on lift so that we can jack it up with the suspension loaded a bunch so we can test fit before we put the tires on. So we have the car up on the air, up in the air on our drive on lift. It was just easier to have this car on the lift. We don't have to worry about taking the uh, coilovers out this time. Um, we won't have to cycle the suspension because we did that with our fitment tool. It's just to triple check our fitment, make sure the wheels fit good, and uh, we won't have any issues, hopefully. <clears throat> I also don't want to put tires on them because if, if for some reason you have to get different tires, you're stuck with the tires. If you put them on a wheel, um, you'll be able to return them if you have them on a fitment tool, but if they're mounted on a wheel, you own them for life. So we're in here. I can put the whole thickness of my hand through it, which is probably about an inch, a little over an inch. Fits good. These fit perfect. These fit exactly like we wanted to um, on the fitment tool. So again, that expensive fitment tool has paid dividends on ordering these wheels and having them fit perfect. So next up, we'll go throw the tires on them and then we'll move on to fitting the front wheels. We got the tires balanced. Mounted, all that jazz, now we'll bolt it on the car. I left the center caps off because the Pontiac emblem is going to be painted black. So we don't have the center caps in yet. However, they just pop in from the front side so we can go ahead and bolt these suckers on. And as always, we run them in by hand. If I have a little impact driver, I'll run them in, but we always Torque them by hand with a torque wrench. Saves your butt. Make sure you get them torqued correctly and you don't have any questions of, oh no, did I tighten those wheels? It's just a good, uh, good insurance policy for yourself to hand torque them with a torque wrench. We'll go to about 95 foot pounds for a half inch stud. We have the front wheels off. We'll give front wheel. I mean, there's not much to look at here. Wheel wells are very big. The biggest thing is the tire. Um, we had great clearance before, but clears the brakes, clears the control arm, clears the tie rod, everything looks good. So we're gonna go ahead and mount the tire on now. Tires mounted. We'll slide it on. And we'll get lugging that started. Now these wheels, we added a little bit of back spacing in to just pull the wheel in so that we don't, this car is gonna have a little bit more of an aggressive stance than it had before with that Roadster Shop spec chassis that we just installed. In another video, you can see that transformation. So we went and just added a tiny bit of back spacing to the wheel to just pull it in so that we're not contacting. There's, there's bolts on this outer rim to the inner wheelhouse. And also on turn-in, there was a, it was pretty close to the fender extension down here. So we wanted to pull the wheel in so that when it turns, it clears. So if we did our math right and did our measuring correct, we shouldn't have any problems. And 
And there we go. Beautiful. Plenty of room. Looking good. It's a good looking wheel. Nothing beats a forge line. So you'll see some wrapped up pictures. We'll get some, you'll see it outside. That concludes the wheel fitment video. Again, invest in tools that make your job a lot easier. Take your time, double check, take the time to take the coilovers out. It may seem like a, like a big pain in the butt. However, it'll save you a lot of money in the end. Joe's Firebird, one of our quintessential builds here, really iconic local car for us, now is that much better with a set of properly fit forge lines on a Roadster Shop spec chassis.